Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, and sent by God to your house to declare unto you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel of Jesus Christ is. How that Jesus Christ died by our sins according to scripture. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scripture. Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Thank God. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recover of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised. The word is not is neither even in your heart, in your mouth, is the word of faith which I preach. People confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead. You shall be saved with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thank God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believe it to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. I want to welcome all of you throughout the world, wherever you're located. Receiving this on live stream or shortwave or Roku or other devices. It's a great blessing today. This is our first recording of the two of the, the goodness sakes of the block, the one hour, six days a week block. Four of us, you'll be watching, uh, listening, or whatever with us. I'm Doyle Davidson. Kathy Davidson is to my left. Good morning. Good morning. Also joining me in this block will be Terry Brown and Kathy By. You just tune in. The gospel is now being preached in virtually every area, every avenue in America. Amen. Thank God. And the world. Oh, thank you. The world. Right. Not just America. Amen. The world. So welcome, world. As you said yesterday, uh, hallelujah. <laughs> Welcome. What? Oh, welcome to the wilderness. To the wilderness. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there. Yes. And got out. And you've been there. And you got out. And that's why we can preach this gospel. Amen. Thank God to the world. Jeremiah chapter 5 tells us that there are weeks appointed uh, for the harvest. And I am asking Kathy to read that. Uh, to give you a better perspective of what this ministry is about. All right, verse 24 of Jeremiah 5. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God, that giveth rain both the former and the latter in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Thank God. Thank you. I am convinced the Lord has ordained me and fellow workers to bring this gospel forth in the earth during these last days. Covered the earth and thank God for shortwave and also live stream, Roku and other devices. And I thank God for all staff workers that are with me, that work with me and in this ministry and support this work. Thank God 
Amen. In the 1987, I prophesied that the Lord, as Joseph's brothers and sisters, brothers, so Jim in the bondage. So my brothers and sisters had put me in the bondage, but there was coming a great deliverance. And that was September 1987. Certainly, I didn't know that I was the first one to come out of that bondage. But we walked far enough, and we don't declare ourselves free but we're free enough to do what God is calling us to do today. Thank God. We're opening up doing what Jesus told us to do, and we're going to use Scripture from Mark chapter 16. Catherine Dee's going to read it, and we're going to teach it. Let's go. Amen. I'm going to begin in verse 14. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go you into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Thank you. I've been in the charismatic movement or entered into it. In 1970, as a practicing veterinarian, and I heard the most ridiculous statements that I could imagine. One was Mark 16 was not in the best manuscripts. I thought, no kidding. So I started looking in the Bible. And I want to go there now. Matthew chapter 10, what Jesus said to the same apostles. Notice in Mark 16 that that's after the resurrection. That is just the 11. But in Matthew 10, that's the 12. Amen. Would you read that? Sure will. Verse 5, these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city the Samaritans enter you not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. You notice, though almost everything in Mark 16 is in Matthew 10, that Jesus gave to the disciples who became the apostles before he ever went to the cross. So you false prophets, you lying spirits that speak to God's people that Mark 16 was not in the best manuscripts, I pray God have mercy on you and I do not understand how you'll ever escape the damnation of hell. Let's go back to Mark 16. All right. We notice that he upbraided the, the, the apostles because of their doubt and unbelief, hardness of heart. And then he gave them a commandment. Go ye into all the world, which this ministry is doing this very day. This is recording. It'll start next Monday, April 6th, cover the entire world the best we can. And he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Is that right? That is correct. 
Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. To every creature. And what does it say next? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth what? Believe the gospel. What's the gospel? We defined it earlier in this broadcast. How that Jesus died for our sins according to scripture. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scripture. That's First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. And he that believeth the gospel and is baptized shall be saved. Now, that word saved and baptism is not necessary for someone to be born again. Be born again, you believe the gospel. To be received the beginning of salvation, you believe the gospel. To become one in the spirit with Jesus, you believe the gospel. Then you need to be baptized in water. Baptized in water. Baptized into the death of Jesus. Romans chapter 6. To do what? To deal with the old man. Deal with the old man. And you're baptized into the death of Jesus. And that is where the old man is baptized into that death. The old man is dead. Now your soul can be saved, not just your spirit. All right? Amen. Now, so water baptism is necessary to deal with the old man, Savior and their soul. Water baptism is not essential to go to heaven. All you have to do is call for the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Thank God. You can see that uh, a thief on the cross with Jesus. Amen. But these signs follow people that believe the gospel and are baptized in water. The first one is what? It says, he that believeth and baptized should be saved. He that believeth not should be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Wait a minute. Notice, if you do not believe the gospel, you're damned. You have to believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose again the third day to be born again or to be saved then you're going to go to heaven with Jesus. If you continue in the cross, taking up your cross daily and following Jesus. Amen. But the first thing that a believer, one preaching the gospel and walking in the spirit, the first thing that happens is they that believe what they're preaching will cast out devils. Did that say that? That's what it says. Yeah. They shall, in, in my name. Go ahead. Right. In my name they shall cast out devils. Right. In the name of Jesus, they, the preaching of the gospel, cast out devils. That's what I do. Been doing that for more than, well, about 40 years or more. Amen. And they, they cast out devils and people that believe the gospel that I preach, that KD preaches, that the others preach that are with me, they believe that. They, they join their faith with those of us preaching the gospel and we cast out your devils with much more ease. Amen. Amen. What's the name? Just, man. You want to say something? Yeah, make a point here. What were the first devils that you started casting out? Where were they? The first one? The first came, one. Came out of me. That's right, yourself. Right. Right. That's sure where is. we learned. I learned by casting them out of myself. Right. I was 
praying one day early on in 1970, 70 maybe, maybe 71, and guess what? Uh, all of a sudden, something in my chest just started spinning, and it was gone. I thought, goodness, I still have all my body parts. What took place? A devil went out of me. Amen. When I was praying. So you guess the devil out of yourself if you believe the gospel and pray. Next is what? Amen. They they shall speak with new tongues. Right. You speak with new tongues when you believe the gospel. No, you don't preach tongues. You preach the gospel and the baptism and the Holy Spirit comes into your heart and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, and you will speak in tongues. Next. Amen. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Right. Take up serpents. No, gospel preachers do not play with snakes. That is, is the body. People that play with snakes and snake handlers in their churches or anywhere else, uh, that's nothing but demonic activity. No, don't be condemned because I tell you the truth. But thank God that I'm a man of God with a heart of integrity that preaches the truth to you. And if you believe the truth and continue in it, the truth will set you free. Amen. Now, next. Oh, drink any deadly thing. No matter what you drink, you believe the gospel, you're walking upright in the spirit and the gospel, serving God with your spirit in the gospel. You can drink anything, it won't hurt you. No, it won't hurt you at all. So you see, I'm not afraid that you're going to poison me. No, I'm not afraid your snake's going to bite me. Because it gets close to me, I'll kill it. Yeah. Right in front of you. Amen. It's a wonderful time to believe the gospel, folks. Because we've got all kinds of contaminants in our water everywhere. Amen. It's incredible what the human race has done to the earth. To the earth. And yes, let me tell you, you environmentalists have contributed contributed just as much as much damage to the earth as those that care nothing about it with all of your silly regulations. Thank God. Now, the fifth one is lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. Right? Right. Notice here that after Jesus talked to them, that's recorded in Mark 16, that he went to heaven. Is that correct? It says, so af then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. After he gave that commission right. that we're just talking about, he was received up into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. Right now, the man, Jesus, the mediator between God and man. Now, but here's what's interesting. I believe, I'm going to let you read. Verse 20, last verse. And they went forth and preached everywhere. Right. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Right. They, the ones he gave the commission to, went forth preaching everywhere. Preaching what? He told them what? The gospel, not just preaching. Preach the gospel. How that Jesus died, 
our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scripture. That's what they preach. Now, Jesus is in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. But guess what? He's working with us. He worked with them. He worked with them confirming what they preached with signs following. What were the signs that followed? First, they cast out devils. Second, they spoke with new tongues. Third, they took up serpents. Uh, you can see that in the book of Acts, chapter 28, I think, where Paul was building a fire and a viper came out off the wood attached to his hand. Paul just shook it off into the fire and the viper was destroyed. And then, drinking any deadly thing won't harm them. Jesus confirming the gospel, which is all-inclusive of the signs. The signs follow the preaching of the gospel. Get that? Preach the gospel, all the signs will follow. Why? Because... Jesus is working with us. He's working with you. Amen. Working with me. Amen. Working with Kathy. Working with Terry. Working with those that you don't yet know that preach the gospel with water and blood. You see, he's working with us doing what? Confirming the word. What's the word? How that Jesus died by our sins, according to Scripture. He was buried. He rose again the third day, according to the Scripture. That's the gospel. That's what he commanded the eleven to preach. That's what he commanded us to preach. Confirming the word with signs following. Jesus working with us, with them, now with us, confirming the word that we, of the gospel with the signs following that he said would follow. You see, folks, this is laid out simple, and I thank God that we are able to preach it all over the world. Amen. Amen. You got anything to say? You no. must. You know, I don't. We have about five minutes late. We left. have five minutes. All right. That's good. David Gasbright, let's hear uh, their set of lamb. Jerry Bye. Hey, Amen.
quickly. So don't be surprised when he comes back to take us away. And the feeble excuses won't get very far when you find yourself there at his throne.
Hello, I'm Kathy Davidson. I'd like you to join me and the ministers of music from here, Water of Life Church in Plano, Texas, as we minister the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. It was May 22, 2011 in Joplin, Missouri. At about 5.15 in the evening, the city siren sounded, a tornado warning. Some heeded the warning and took cover. Others ignored it. 20 minutes later, the tornado touched down. It began just east of the Kansas state line and entered into the southwest corner of the city of Joplin, moving east. What began as a Category EF1 tornado, the damaged homes quickly turned into a Category 5, with several vortexes with winds topping out at 250 miles an hour. The force of the winds picked up vehicles semi-trucks, and tractor trailers, throwing them hundreds of yards. Great commercial buildings flattened, totally demolished. Large trees left as stubs, totally stripped of any bark. 108, 158 people died. Over 1,100 people injured. 2,000 businesses leveled. 7,000 homes destroyed. I witnessed the damage several days later. Doyle Davidson, the president of this ministry, grew up in that area, and a group of us traveled there to minister to the men and women of the rescue effort with food, money, and the gospel. What I saw reminded me of photographs of Hiroshima after the atomic bomb exploded. But the night of the tornado as it was crossing the city, a group of about 16 people at a convenience store, along with four of its employees, seeing the impending tornado coming and knowing they needed to take refuge, huddled in the back of the store. But as the tornado moved in, they quickly moved into the walkway of a storage cooler. There, surrounded by glass bottles and doors, the men, women, and children clung to each other, waiting for the tornado to hit. Someone in the convenience store had their phone camera on and took a video of the incident. Although the video is poor, the audio is clear, and you can hear the roar of the tornado approaching. You hear the beginning of the building being torn apart. You hear the, men the metal renting. You hear the screams and the chaos of the people in the cooler. You hear children crying, calling for mama, and then you hear the deafening sound of the tornado. But in the midst of this, you hear a woman, first quietly saying, Heavenly Father, and then Jesus. But as the tornado continued to plow through, the woman's voice gets louder. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Her voice is heard above everything else, and she doesn't stop. For what seems like an eternity, the tornado roars through in two ways, and then you hear just the sound of a raging storm. Everyone in that cooler survived. Amen. Days later, I saw that convenience store where this took place. The lot was nothing but a pile of mangled metal. Everything was demolished, totally destroyed, and flattened, except a small corner of the convenience store building, the walk-in cooler. I saw where the only way they were able to get out was through a window, climbing up over some boxes, cases of beverages. Psalm 34, 17 says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and he delivereth them out of all their troubles. And in that convenience store was a woman crying out to God, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know what Isaiah 51, 16 states? I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand. We have a God that saves. I have a great song for this. It's ministered here by Terry Brown, God on the Mountain. 
Let God minister to you while she sings. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But then things change and you're down in the valley. Don't lose faith for your name. But it's down in the valley of trials and temptation. That's when your faith is really put to the test. But it's down in that valley of trials and temptation. That's when your faith is really put to the test. For the God on the mountain, He's still God in the valley. When I'd like to invite you to join me here Sunday mornings in our sanctuary in Plano, Texas at 18th and Avenue T P as I minister the gospel along with Doyle Davidson and the Water of Life ministers of, of music. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. I thank you. 
Father, I thank you. Father, let the power of my Lord be great. Father, let the power of my Lord be great. Grant us repentance. Grant your people repentance. Open our eyes that we can see. Open our hearts like you did for Lydia, that we can attend unto the things which are spoken. Turn us from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto you. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like us to turn to Mark 1. And I'm going to begin in verse 1 of Mark 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Notice, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair, and with a girdle of skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, whose shoe latchet I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Verse 12, And immediately that spirit he just received driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness forty days, being tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. So now he is Jesus, has been baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Ghost and sent into the wilderness. And now, what does Jesus say? Verse 14, now after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, he has just been, he has been baptized in water. He has been baptized in the Holy Ghost. He has been sent 40 days into the wilderness to overcome the devil. He comes out, and what does he say? He says, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now let's take a look at that statement. The first preaching of Jesus after he's come out of the wilderness. He says, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. What is the kingdom of God? I want you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians 4. And I'm going to read verse 19 and 20. This is talking about the kingdom of God. He said, but I will come to you shortly if the Lord will. And this is Paul speaking. And will know. Not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. Notice, not the speech of them that are puffed up, but the power. Paul was looking for power. Amen. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Do you see that? The kingdom of God. What Jesus said, the kingdom of God is at hand. What was at hand? The power. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is at hand. Paul said, the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. In power. Pretty cool. But, but, let's go back to Mark 1. What did Jesus say to do? 
He said, repent ye and believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. Not believe power. Not believe in the power, but believe the gospel. Repent you and believe the gospel. Repent you. Change what you're believing in and believe the gospel. Change what you trust in and trust the gospel. Change what you're clinging to and cling to the gospel. The gospel. What happens when you believe that gospel? Well, first off, let's find out exactly what the gospel is. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. I'm going to begin in verse 1. This is Paul speaking. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, what Jesus said we needed to believe in. I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you. So Paul preached it which also you have received and wherein you stand, wherein you trust him, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Look the word unless. You can believe this in vain. But verse 3, For I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received. Paul received it. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. What did Paul say was the gospel? The gospel is that Jesus died according to the scriptures, according to what this word of God says. And he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the same thing Jesus preached. That's the same thing Peter preached. That's the same thing all the apostles preached. Let's go back to Mark 1. The time is fulfilled, Jesus said, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. The kingdom of God is with power. But Jesus didn't say believe in the power. He said believe the gospel. Well, what happens when you believe the gospel? That Jesus died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. Go with me now to Romans 1, 16. Paul again speaking. For I am not ashamed, not timid in, not afraid to use the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Notice, for it is the power of God. What is the power of God? The gospel. The gospel is the power of God. Amen. The gospel that Jesus died, that he was buried, that he rose again is the power of God. What is the power of God? That's the kingdom. You believe the gospel, and what do you get? You get the kingdom. You believe that Jesus died, he was buried, he rose again. You get the kingdom. You get the power. Why? Because the power is in the gospel. I have a perfect example for this, and I spoke a little bit about it yesterday. Turn with me to John 11. I'm going to begin in verse 20. This is Jesus coming. His friend Lazarus is dead, and Jesus shows up. His friend Lazarus is dead, and Jesus shows up. Verse 20, then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, he will give it to thee. And Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said unto her, Martha, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. Do you hear what Jesus is speaking? I am the resurrection. What is the gospel? That Jesus died, that he was buried, 
that he rose again. What was he telling Martha? I am the resurrection. You're looking at the gospel. You're looking at the gospel. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whatsoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, shall never die. Believest thou this? And you know what he said next? Where'd you lay him? Where'd you lay him? I am the resurrection. Where'd you lay him? You know what he did? He walked in that gospel, that kingdom. He believed the gospel. And like I said yesterday, he said, I am the resurrection. And he hadn't even died yet. He hadn't gone to the cross yet. But he knew the gospel. He knew the power of God was in that he was going to die and he was going to be buried and he was going to be resurrected so he could look at Martha and say, I am the resurrection. Now, where did you lay him? And you know what he did? He raised Lazarus from the dead. He raised Lazarus from the dead. That is the power of the gospel. You know, God brings to mind a situation I had years ago. I had a dear friend that suddenly went into a coma and they said he wasn't going to live and he had nothing ready. He had a family to take care of and nothing was done. None of his business things were in order and they were going to be devastated. And I was praying about this in my living room one evening and the spirit of God, the power of God came up in me. The same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus. That same gospel came up in my heart and I remember rebuking the devil, rebuking death over this man by the, by the um, gift of faith, rebuked death over him. And you know what? I got a call the next morning. They said, you won't believe this, but he's awake. He's, a, he's awake. And you know what? God didn't have me pray for his healing. But he lived six weeks more and he got everything in order. He got everything he needed to do done. And you know what he did then? He went to be with Jesus. He went to be with Jesus. You know why that happened? Because Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. Are they telling you you're going to die? You tell them right back, Jesus is the resurrection. He is the resurrection, and don't die. I've got a great song here. I've got just a little talk with Jesus by the Water of Life Quartet. Let it minister to you. Talk to the man that is the resurrection while this, God, while this song is playing. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. You feel a little prayer will turn in. And you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. Prayer will turn in, and you 
Though the little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. You feel a little prayer will turn and up. You know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell them all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. You feel a little prayer will turn in. And you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. You say to me, Kathy, I want to know that power. I want to know this Jesus that you talk about because the Jesus I know has no power. Well, the Jesus I know has all power. And how do you get to know him? Romans 10 verse 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. Thou shall be born again. Notice it says believe in the Lord, confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be saved. You know that word saved not only means born again, but that's part of it. It means saved in any situation that you have. If you need healing, believing that Jesus died, he was buried and raised again, will bring you your healing. If you need delivered from an addiction, believing that Jesus died, that he was buried, that he was raised again, will bring you that deliverance from that addiction. If you need a job, if you need finances, believing that Jesus died, was buried, and raised again will bring you that deliverance. Until next time, God bless. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.